Michael Boyles, strengthcoach.com presents the Strength Coach Podcast, brought to you by Perform Better, the experts in functional training and rehabilitation, performbetter.com. All right, hey everybody, welcome to episode 302 of the Strength Coach Podcast, the official podcast of Michael Boyles, strengthcoach.com, the world's best source for strength and conditioning information brought to you by Perform Better, the experts in functional training and rehabilitation. I'm your host, Anthony Rand, and the show notes are located at continuefit.com. All right, today, it's our end of the year show. So obviously, I'm releasing this after the end of the year because I just moved from New York to Indiana over the holidays. So it's been a little crazy. I did the move myself with my wife, and we just basically... I did a couple of U-Hauls driving it myself and unloading and loading it with the help of some friends. So anyway, I'm a little behind. So I just wanted to let everybody know that's why I've been, this one took so long. But uh, for the shrinkcoach.com Coaches Corner with Coach, we're going to talk about, this is the end of the year interview. And we're going to just go over some things that, you know, obviously this is a crazy year. We're going to talk about that. I'll ask him if it was the worst year ever. We're going to talk about some of the good things that came out of it. We'll talk about taking action, having diverse multiple revenue streams, and what the future holds. Now, since we don't have a Hit the Gym in the Shrink Coach segment, this is also brought to you by my new sponsor, Nomly. That's right. We have a new sponsor. And Nomly is the member experience platform for modern training gyms, and it helps you build lasting relationships with your members so they stay longer and pay longer. And it's an incredible tool that really puts all of your communication with your members in one place. This is so important. It allows you to keep track of all that communication. Again, really important, especially if you have some staff. And which, you know, look, that's really important for retention, right? We hear so much about marketing, but rarely do people talk about retention. So this is a tool that can help you build lasting relationships with your members so they stay longer and pay longer. So go to nomly.com, you spell it N-A-A-M-L-Y.com and you can schedule a demo, that's what I did. It'll really give you a feel for what you can do with this incredible tool. And if you use the referral code strength coach, you'll get a 30 day free trial, give you plenty of time to try it out. All right, for the train heroic data driven coaching segment, Tim and Adam discuss marketing and engagement strategies. See, I just said everyone's talking about marketing, but these guys are combining them. Engagement, that's retention for the holiday season. So Coach Boy and I both use Train Row to deliver all of our online training, and they have plans as low as $10 a month, depending on how many people you have. And they have a free 14-day trial. If you mentioned we sent you, we're going to put a four-week athlete development program in your account absolutely free. Kind of give you a head start, see what programs look like. So if you're a coach and you're looking for the best online training solution in the game, go to trainerow.com to take your free 14-day trial. One thing I was just talking to somebody about this too is the Trainer Relic app is really slick. It looks good too, and clients like that. So it's just, I know it's uh, it's kind of like a golf club. Sometimes a driver, you got to be look when you're looking down at that driver. It's got to look nice. You got to feel. It's got to feel good. Train heroic is like that for me. All right, for the certified functional strength coach segment with Brendan Merrick and Kevin Carr. Today's show, Brendan continues the seven part series on movement as medicine, and in part four, he's going to talk about your get up score, and this is really important information about like being a predictor for client help. Brendan, as usual, they have some really great statistics in here, so. Uh, just an important uh, uh, series and an important episode. For the Fit to Speak segment with Jenny Rarick, she introduces a new four-part series on the four elements of great communication, and they are assessing a situation, building a message plan, the ability to translate that message, and then finally delivery of that message. To go over them all today, kind of an overview, but in the next four episodes, she's going to go into much more de- detail. I really love this segment with Jenny. Uh, like I said, she, I worked with her for a few lectures and even some video stuff. She's awesome. All right, for Perform Better, guys, the wait is finally over. The app is live. And uh, the app features amazing presentations from this year's virtual summer seminar series. I was in that. You know, I talked all about it all summer. 
Uh, but now they're free and you can get them whenever you want. They also have some earlier functional training summits presentations as well. So this app was designed for professionals who train or rehab clients, patients, or athletes. And it features education from the world's best trainers, coaches, and therapists, all free. You can learn from industry leaders on topics like strength conditioning, personal training, nutrition, business, and program design right in the palm of your hand. You know where to get apps. Go to the App Store or Google Play. So check that out. I love the way they did this this app because they chunked them down. Each presentation is, is broken down so you don't have to worry about kind of going back and forth. All right, lots of things to get to. So let's get on the phone with Coach Boyle. All right, now it's time for the strengthcoach.com Coach's Corner with Coach Boyle. Strengthcoach.com, the world's best source for strength and conditioning information. You can try it out for 30 days, just a buck. You'll have access to all of the articles, videos, and programs, as well as the best forum on the net. It's the only place to have full access to Coach Boyle. He's on every day answering questions. Remember, 30 days, just a buck. Uh, you know, obviously, because of the year we've had, and we're going to talk about that all this episode for the most part. Uh, you know, we extended that trial uh, to kind of give people an opportunity to come on the site, have a community and, uh, you know, be part of uh, a, a bigger uh, picture, especially when for some of the gyms that are closed. So check all that out at strengthcoach.com. Coach, how you doing? I'm doing great, Ian. How are you? Good. Getting ready for the big, I don't know. Big snowstorm. I'm always skeptical when they say that we're supposed to get, you know, first it was 17, then it was 8 to tw- uh, 12 to 16. You're saying 8 to 12. Uh, you, but you guys ready? Uh, we're ready. My snowblower is working. I went out and fired it up uh, the other day just to make sure. I got to I gotta do a few more things around the yard today. Probably after I get done here, I'll go out and just clean up a few little things. I got my... My rider mower, I kind of got it under the porch and covered it up, and I got to cover my regular, uh, my regular lawnmower. Cindy's using the garage as gym space for her and her friends, so I can't put the stuff back in the garage. I got to leave it outside, so I had to buy coverage for everything. <laughs> All right. Um, what about the gym? Did you guys just did you just automatically close for this afternoon and tomorrow, or this one we closed based on? Usually we base it on the weather report, and if it's even iffy we stay open but this was like for us it's very clear that it's going to start <clears throat> at night and go through the morning you know which means it would make it the biggest thing i worry about in all honesty is our staff safety and getting you know people getting to the gym and i don't want people when it's snowing one to two inches an hour at six o'clock in the morning and the plows are out trying to figure out a way to get to the gym so we elected to close Absolutely. Well, you know, it, it kind of goes along with the year that we've been having. And uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, you know, obviously you've been doing this for one or two years. Do you feel like this has been, and I don't want you to feel like looking back, but like while we were going through it, especially March, April, May, June, you know, kind of going through and, and having a lot of uncertainty, you feel like this was the hardest year from the business perspective, like kind of keeping up with things and changing and, and having to, and I know you like that stuff, but uh, was it the hardest year you've had? No, I don't think so. To be perfectly honest, I think some of the earlier years were harder trying to work two jobs and get from place to place. I think there was, a, I mean, and I guess part of it for me is I look and there's a lot of people that have it a lot worse than we did. If I, you know, now, if you'd asked me this three months ago, I might've had a different feeling, but we've come back. We were, I think at like 77% for the fall. And so we've come back really good. And there's other people who are out of business, you know, 40% or something of restaurants are gone. So I'd love to, to paint it out as being this big sort of unmitigated disaster, but we've been okay. I, we, you know, we got PPP money. You know what I mean? Like everything kind of fell in place for us. So I, I would not, I wouldn't want to do it again, but I also, you know, in some ways there was some unique stuff that came out of it, you know, being home with your kids every day for three months, training in the garage, training in the backyard, and we're not out of business. We're, we're going to be okay. Like, so 77%, that's pretty damn good. But I know you must've gone, you guys went up 
you know, we set up the train heroic, well, I think at the end of last year, uh, you know, with at MBSC, right, where you, you changed over. And I know the push. So you had everything in place already. What about those numbers? Like how much do you know, like a percentage wise, like how much that that went up? I don't know with Train Heroic because it was a new business. It took us a while to get back kind of even because we were with exercise.com and then we basically went to kind of a zero revenue point and then we came back up. I'm not exactly sure where that number is. The area that was the biggest game changer for us was CFSC. <clears throat> that could have been a disaster. And we had much like what we did with Train Heroic, we had just made a deal with Inspire 360 to do an online course, which I really didn't want to do. It's really funny. I fought it kind of, and then was like, you know, they, the guy, uh, Ravi from uh, Inspire was very persuasive with me in terms of, Hey, you're going to reach more people. You're going to be able to do more international, blah, blah, blah. And we were like, okay, you know, and, and we worked with them to develop a way to do our practical, like people, they do the whole course and then they have to send in a video, just like the practical that we do in the course. And somebody, and actually, I think Steve Bigelow and Dan are doing them, they grade the videos. So you still have to pass the video part to get your CFSC. But that actually, we equaled our revenue. So we're at like 100%, maybe over 100% of what we were doing before because of how successful the online was. I wonder what, that, do you feel like that will take away from next fall? Because it's going to be another you know, 10 months before you're doing real, truly doing live, uh, able to, put I, want, I, don't, I don't really know. Like it's hard to say because I do think, and we've said this before when we talked about this, <clears throat> I think people will be dying to go to live events, whether it's performed at a summit or whether it's go to a live CFSC or whatever it is. So part of me thinks, no, that it won't because the other thing you realize is just, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of trainers. And so when, you know, you, when you think you're, you're worried about kind of getting saturated, I don't think that that's necessarily a real worry. I'd like to think, okay, well, gee, every trainer that there is in the world already has the CFSC and now we're in big trouble. That would be a great spot to yeah, be in. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's when you go to, and you guys have already done it, CSFC two. <laughs> yeah, um, level two. Exactly. Yeah. We've got more people doing level two and. I mean, the good thing is we've been very, I don't, you know, do you describe yourself as smart? Do you describe yourself as lucky? I think I describe us as lucky in terms of a lot of things have, have gone the right way for us, even during this pandemic time. And, and as I said, it, it's not perfect, but I do feel like I need to be kind of thankful and grateful because we're in a much better position than a lot of people. Yeah, and it is interesting. It's really hard to tell because although, like you said, there's always there's we've lost a lot of trainers. A lot of trainers have shut their doors. They've decided this is not for me. I can't do it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna train even. I'm gonna go and be a financial planner. Uh and so we've lost a lot of trainers, but at the same time, I think there's gonna be other people coming around saying, you know what? I really got into fitness during the pandemic. Uh, I was able to stay with my family. So I'm going to get certified and become a trainer. So I think a lot of that will be even. But like you said, although there are the people that want, that need to go, there's people like like me personally, I need to go. I went to see Charlie Weingroff do a, a, an event up at Mike Ranfone's place in, in August. And I, you know, as soon as Mike Ranfone told me about it, I, said, I'm in, please, I have to be there, you know, because I needed to see the the people and I needed to be in it. But, but there's still going to be some people that are afraid, like the 23% that didn't come back in the gym, uh, for the most part, some of that, some of those people just don't want to go back to a gym. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting, who knows. But I, I think the one thing for me that I've really you know, kind of reinforced is that idea about, and we talked about this on the forum somewhere about diversifying, you know, not just additional revenue streams, but trying to make sure, like, for example, when the shutdown came, all right, so I lost a little money from the, the training that I do. And that's nice to have that money, but I had shrinkwitch.com, body by boy online and the podcast. And those things were not affected by, um, by that. And, and, and if something happened in the internet, 
then I could have went to training. Like if it was the opposite, we could have done those things. So, and you, you certainly have that. You have the, you know, the different sites, you have uh, the certification, you have the physical location. Um, and uh, so it's interesting to be, I feel like that's a big lesson or reinforced for me is, you know, make sure you're diversifying your portfolio. Yes, without question. And we, like I said, we're very lucky in that, in that regard. And just the fact that we had the interest in doing a lot of different things and that we were thinking about that. And as I said, I, it, some of it's just luck, Anthony. I mean, you know, Kevin Larby and these guys were on me about the certification thing for a long time. <clears throat> I fought them on it. And it's one of the best things that we've ever done. It might be the best thing that we've ever done in terms of it's an amazing business model. It's an amazing education piece. And then, I mean, the difference, I wasn't lucky. I was smart enough to realize that I wanted Kevin and Brandon involved and that they would do a really good job. But again, I, I didn't probably realize how much they were really going to blossom in this situation and how good they would be. And then, as I said, with the online stuff, you kind of steered me to the train heroic stuff. And we partnered with Steve Bigelow and Ken Whittier in that. And that seems to be going well. So I think a lot of it is, and we've talked about this, it's taking action. It's doing stuff and not necessarily worrying about stuff being perfect, but it's just doing stuff. Well, okay, we're going to do some stuff and we're going to try to do some different things and we're going to sort of see what of these things works out better than other things. And then we're going to focus on the things that are working out better. And in our case, um, more things are working out better than are not working out. And, and that's really good. Yeah. And I think that does come from years of having integrity. That's what I love about Kevin and Brendan is, is, you know, they have a lot of integrity in everything that they do. And so every time they're trying to deliver something, it's delivered with a sense of pride and they want to, it's always, you know, being the best that they can be when they're doing it. So uh, it, it's great to see. Uh, uh, I agree. It's great to see that, that piece of it and the way they've blossomed. And, and, you know, I, I think we, you know, we could have, we could have called it anyway, based on what we saw from them. I mean, I used to always call them the super trainers, right. On the show. Yeah. Like those are the guys that were uh, ahead of the game and going to everything and, and, you know, putting the work in as well. Well, a lot of people don't want to put the work in. So I think uh, that, that was, a, that was a huge part of it. But Another thing I was thinking of, because I was on the phone with Brendan yesterday, just showing him, talking to him about the situation that came up where somebody had signed up in March for the dollar trial and they, they canceled the first day and at traincoach.com, you're only allowed to get to do the trial once. So the guy, I think either thought he was going to scam us but I'm, I use the word scam very lightly, uh, uh, scam us and, you know, get another 30 days. But what happens is if you try that, it charges you and he got charged. So I think what he wanted to do was to log into the site and get the discount for body by boil online. Cause any strengthcoach.com member gets a discount to body by boy online. So he signed up for body by boy online. And then he asked this, Oh boy, you know, I didn't mean to sign up. And, um, but I was telling Brandon, I go, look, the bottom line is even if he quote unquote scammed us to get the discount at body by boy online, I said, that's one thing about Mike is like, we just, we're just happy. People want to be part of the site. It's really not a scam. I mean, they're still paying us $30 a month. And I think if more people, more people don't take action because they're like, well, we have to have safeguards in for this and, and, and make sure our stuff is copyrighted and make sure this and have the behind the paywall. And they spend so much time with all the crap and worrying about those little, you and I never worried about that with Tranquil Time. We're like, whatever, here, you want your money back? Here, here's your money back. No questions asked. Boom, here it is. Because I think, it's so minor and we worry about these minor things as a way to kind of keep us from taking action. Right. But I think that goes back to sort of the, uh, you know, Dweck's mindset book. You know, when you think about, you know, you could call it a growth mindset or an abundance mentality and having that kind of mentality versus the, uh, the fixed or the scarcity mentality. And there's so many people who are like fixed scarcity people. They're so worried about, 
like you said, getting screwed or getting scammed, losing money. And I look at it and think, I'm so like, we've had this conversation so many times, you and I, I am so not worried about that in any way, shape or form, you know, whether it's people stealing my information, whether it's people, you know, getting access to the site, like none of that stuff matters to me because I just keep, you know, and I'm, I'm probably people listen to the podcast and they're probably like, oh my God, Mike Boyle is like the king of the cliches. And I am. But I, you know, Jack Parker rings in my head all the time, like, Mike, just do the next right thing. And I feel like if you just keep doing the next right thing or even just do the next thing, like, okay, what's the next thing? Let's do that. And not worry, you know, people, like you said, people are so worried about, they think about what could go wrong and they talk themselves out of attempting anything. And I look at that and think, that's just dumb. It just makes no sense to be, you know, kind of hyper focused on, what the downside is. And if you look at us, we've got this really successful business now that's that's really like four entities deep, you know, between like you said, a bricks and mortar location and a certification and an online program. And then, you know, the strengthcoaches.com site stuff. And that doesn't even include like my own speaking or writing or, you know, or those things. But the difference is we did things, we took action, you know, you said, Hey, let's do a podcast. And you know, how many times have you told that story? Yeah. I was like, sure, let's do it. What's the podcast? Like, I didn't even know what I was saying yes to when you said you wanted to do it, but I was like, Anthony's a hustler. He's a go getter. This is probably a pretty good idea. You know, what do I got to do? I got to get interviewed for 20 minutes, a couple times a week. I can do that. I, you know, like, I have no idea what he's going to do with this stuff once he gets it. But I mean, it's certainly not going to make us go backwards. Right. And so, and then you look at how successful this podcast has been to the point where like, you're like a, you know, a, a local fitness celebrity, you know, you're the voice, the voice of the strength coach podcast that, you know, people want to meet you because you had this idea that you were going to do something that was really new and that hadn't been successful. Like you didn't say, Oh, I know, I know a hundred guys who are making money off podcasts. You probably didn't know one. None. <laughs> so yeah you know you're right and and i i use that story in my lecture at perform better which is available on the app everybody uh is uh the um is is look the i went to mike number one mike had michael boyle.biz and it was a free forum and we had so many amazing people on there but i couldn't believe when you signed on to take over sportspecific.com i could remember to this day everybody you were like look we're going to give everybody three months free to the new site to strengthcoats.com if you don't like it, you can cancel but i'm going to give you three months thanks for being members of body by boyle uh, michael boyle.biz and so you got so many people were complaining. And I always say, I don't know, I don't even know if Mike remembers this, but so many people were complaining. I can't believe you're going in. Mike, you're selling out. We have a good thing here. You had to give everybody six months. And all I was thinking was, I can't believe people don't want to pay $9.95 to be part of this amazing forum that we've had. And now it's going to be even better because all Mike's stuff is going to be, I'll pay $10, you know, a month to do this. And so number one was keep your eyes open for opportunity instead of looking at it like, oh, wow, I got to pay 10 bucks. I, I saw it as an opportunity. I said, oh, Mike's got a new site. I'm doing this other podcast. I wonder if he'll, he'll you know, say yes to me, maybe uh, doing a podcast to promote shrankcoach.com. And then the other lesson in that is the answer to every unasked question is no. The worst you would say was, and I don't think so right now. I don't know what a podcast is. And, you know, I don't like talking. Um, and uh, so, so, you know, that those are the two huge lessons that I got from that. And I think that's what people have to understand when you, you know, kind of, I know we got off topic with this year, but just understanding, like, that's why we got in this position. I was talking to my, somebody in my building yesterday. I think everybody in my building was either behind in rent minimum two months or had to renegotiate for a couple of months. I did not. I paid and I tried to make sure I paid on the first every month because I knew nobody was paying them. But April 1st, May 1st, boom, June 1st, every because I had these other things. I re, I I'm I write it down all the time. I'm grateful that I had no interruption in revenue. And I think that's because we set it up and we took that action 
a long time ago. So they say, right? What is a luck? Luck is about preparation, right? So I think that's a big part of it. Yeah, you no, know, and you're right. I mean, and, and but it is, but how many of these sort of self improvement books have you read where that's all they talk about? Take action, take massive action. And I, I embraced a lot of that stuff when I first started to really do a lot of self help reading. I remember those things. And I remember, you know, like I said, I've, I've quoted these cliches over and over again, you know, in terms of, you know, be a 90% guy, you know, the, the remaining 10% will kill you, you know, all these things. And, and I remember, you know, kind of giving myself permission to, to write an article that I didn't think, you know, it wasn't like freaking war and peace, you know, that it wasn't going to be, uh, you know, in the library of Congress, but I just send it in like, you know, something it's done. I wrote it. And that leads to four book you know, getting up in front of people and speaking. There's just so much stuff that it's all about action. It's all about not saying, you know, when someone says, can you speak at Rotary? I think some people would look at me and be like, you spoke at Rotary in Malden? And I'm like, yeah, I've spoken at Rotary in Malden like five times. You know, and it was always a friend of mine from high school that asked me if I'd come and talk to the Rotary Club. And I don't know if I ever got a client out of it or whatever, I, you know, if I got anything out of it ever, but I got more speaking experience. And I mean, I still do it. I probably did one three, four years ago again for another buddy of mine, you know, at the local Rotary Club, you know, at a, a spaghetti and bad chicken luncheon. <laughs> but there's so many people who just don't do stuff or they do. It's like only what I'm getting paid for. You know what I mean? Like only if, you know, only if it's worth it for me. And I think what I realized is that some things are going to be worth it for me way down the road. And we've talked about this too, but I always, you know, I, I always say to everybody, I'm a long game player. I will look at stuff and think, okay, I'm going to play the long game here. And I'm going to look at what is this going to do for me five years down the road? What is this going to do for me 10 years down the road? Not, you know, am I going to get paid today for the hour that I spent or whatever it was? Yeah. I always remember too, you, you know, I always, I have a saying about certain titles of books if you understand the title sometimes you don't have to read the book i think if you like like men are from mars women are from venus you don't have to read that book if you get it you can get the, get it in the title like just understand that we're different but ready fire aim was you you had i guess read that and then you were just love it and you love that saying but i never read that book because i just said you know what that's all you need to know ready fire aim that is brilliant you don't even need to open that book because that is telling you everything you need to know right there and you a long time ago that was one of the you used to always sit ready fire him i'm really into ready fire him ready fire him and i think that's where people get caught up is they you know and we talked about this earlier today is you know they worry about too many things no just fire and then aim right you know what they're worried about they're always worried about failing I'm always worried about succeeding. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and I know that I definitely can't succeed if I don't try. But obviously, if I try, there's certainly a possibility that I'm going to fail. But I, I, now I, I just don't approach it that way. Or if I do, I guess my, my desire to succeed overcomes my fear of failure. And I, I also think there's an element of what people like you or, or I f like really define failure as where some people might stop sooner than they should because they feel like it's not going the way maybe it would have and and we'll kind of keep trudging and like you said in it for the long game so I think that's always a big piece of it Mike I want to talk about the future right now and just kind of some predictions like for example I'll go first because I feel like uh, just to give you an example, and I, I feel like because so, somebody asked me this recently and I just said, look, the bottom line is I think we have to look at deliverables, right, on a few different levels. So, look, the deliverable in your facility or, you know, the way you train, maybe you're not doing groups anymore. Maybe you have to go back to one on one a little bit more. You have to be more open to those things. Like, don't throw out the Zoom yet. You know, maybe that's a, that's a way that some people like that you can put the camera up there while you're doing some of your semi-private and kind of kill two birds at one stone, repurpose it almost. Um, things like apps, like 
it has to be a part. Somebody might come in and say, look, I only want to come in here once a week, but I have a home gym and, and you know, what else can you do for me? Whether that's even Excel, I think we have to look at it where in the past we weren't as open to maybe we were like, this is my vision this way. I think there's, we have to be a little bit better. And even things like delivering the programming, like whether that's, you know, at MBSC and you have pods, uh, uh, maybe that's going to stay a uh, thing. Things, some things have to get sacrificed. You talked about some, some sled work that, that had gotten sacrificed. I feel like the deliverable might have to be, maybe, maybe it means and maybe it doesn't mean right now that you do it once every two days or once a week, but maybe it means you go on a hike with your, you talk about going for hikes and you talk about going for bike rides and you talk about uh, doing it like, like gym led things like that, things like outdoors, because I feel like that's diversifying our portfolio again within our facility or within our profession to saying like, okay, I have a lot of options. So if you do get shut down, look, don't look at this like, Hey, we're going to get, this is it's COVID, but we're, a vaccine's coming in the fall. We're going to be fine. Something else co- might come along. So they, you know, we need to be prepared for these type of things. So I think uh, going along with what I said before about, about this idea about diversifying. I think that's what we have to look at, like from a deliverable perspective uh, on a couple different levels. What would you say for yourself, the future? Like, what is it looking like for, you know, you in MBSC? Well, one, the future, this, the pod style is here to stay because it's more efficient. And I, Elspeth mentioned that on the site in her place too. We've, we've made improvements in our business to make our business better. And so, you know, I think that's part of the future. I think part of the future for us is just trying to get our, you know, our bricks and mortar business back, get back to hundred percent because I want to get back to the point, you know, and I think we talked about this sort of mid pandemic, it's kind of scary when that you've got one of your major assets, like your business that you think you can sell that suddenly now like has a value of zero <laughs> that no one would even consider paying for it. So I think the biggest thing we've got to do is we've got to get back up and running back up to where we were and then get better again, based on what we learned from the pandemic. So those are the things that I see in the future. And then in all honesty, the future for me is, is figuring out, okay, how do the, you know, the, you know, whether it's the Kevin cars and the Steve Bigelow's and those people, how do they eventually transition into taking over Mike Boyle strength and conditioning? Cause the future for me, um, I'm not, I'm not a long hauler here anymore. Like I, I can see myself when Mark goes to college, I would very much like to be close to wherever he is and being able to go and watch games and not be worrying about a bricks and mortar business and maybe not be worrying about any business. Maybe just thinking about, okay, I'll do a little, I'll do a little writing and a little speaking and a little consulting kind of thing and, and, and live my life. So um, I think my future in that way, because of my age is probably a little bit different than the average fitness person. Yeah, absolutely. And do you think going back to the facility the pods, has that really been the biggest change? Uh, do you feel like there's some other areas that maybe have changed? I think that's the biggest change. I mean, it, it's made us be, I mean, I, I always say this, we were really organized before but trying to ensure that we could move people through in this kind of socially distanced world has made us even that much more efficient. So that is clearly the biggest change beyond this. Like the other changes are like logistical bullshit, you know, where people are going to come in and where they're going to go out and taking temperatures. Like there's a lot of happy horseshit that we have to do because the government tells us to. And then there are good programming decisions that we made, you know, that are going to make our program better. I'd love to, in all honesty, I'd, if we get back on our feet and everything's going great again, I'll probably improve that pod system even more. I mean, I might end up where we've got two sets of racks in the gym. Uh, There's, so there's, there's other things that I think we could do, but we're trying to not obviously not spend money. So. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about, when we talked, there was actually a thread on this and, and we were talking, I was, somebody was talking about leases and I was saying how, you know, there, there's different ways now to like really kind of look at other industries. Number one was the, uh, like almost like the, uh, the fixed rent expense. So I know I was, I mentioned I was in the bar business and 
you know, I, it was a little different because they owned like 1%. The, the hotel owned 1% of the bar, but the bar, we paid like 8 to 10%. It was because I ran a couple bars, but 8 to 10% based off of the revenue. So if you had a good month, obviously your rent was more, but it was all, it was all relative. And if you can keep your, your rent at 8 to 10%, that's ridiculous. That's awesome. Um, so I think renegotiating those type of things. Frank Dolan was in the middle of a lease in July and ended up not pulling the trigger, but there was, there were new things on there. Like, Hey, uh, shutdown clause. Uh, you know, if, if, uh, if the government shuts us down again and we can't operate, you know, the, you only have to pay 25% of your, uh, of the lease, right. Uh, the monthly fee, whatever. Uh, so, uh, I think there's a lot of stuff that's going to happen in the future with, with leases as well. Yeah, I think so too. Um, because I do think, you know, it's funny, we're in the process, our landlord's trying to squeeze us for more money, which is crazy. We're fighting our landlord about them increasing fees and management fees. And I'm kind of looking, these guys have balls in the midst of a pandemic like this when people aren't paying their rent. We're paying our rent. We're doing the things we're supposed to be doing. We're doing it right. And they're trying to jack up, uh, you know, our, our non-rent related fees. So I wish I could get out of my lease, but... Uh, I think that's, you know, that's a case of, and I hate this, getting punished for doing either doing a good job or doing the right thing because they're getting screwed in so many other areas. They're like, look, you know, these guys are doing well. They're still there. They're paying the rent. Uh, they, they, you know, they're not going to find a place at 20,000 square feet, for example. Maybe they're saying that in their head. Uh, and, uh, you know, what are they going to do? They're going to move. They're not going to move. They're not going to move all this stuff. So uh, it's it just sucks when you're doing somebody uh, doing justice by somebody and then uh they, they try and do that that type of thing yeah it does it it stinks but that you know that's and that's the bad part with when you look at business people sometimes is that hey who are you gonna screw well screw the guy that's paying you the guy the guy's paying on time <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah. to me i look at that and think that makes no sense at all but to a straight up businessman they're thinking well who am i gonna get money out of the only guy i can get money out of is the guy who's paying I'm not, you know, I can't get blood from a stone, so I'll try to go back to something that has a little bit left in it, which it doesn't make sense, but it's the way of the world. Yep. Well, on that note, Coach, we're going to wish you a, ha a happy Merry Christmas and a happy New Year, because this is our last end of the year episode, so that's why we took some extra time with you. So thanks for doing this. Have a great holiday. Be careful uh, in the snow tonight with the big storm and uh, we'll talk to you next time all right thanks Dan. i appreciate it all right guys just a reminder about not only they uh normally sponsor for the hit the gym with the train coach segment we combine that today with coach boyle so not only also brought you coach boyle today and not is the ultimate retention tool designed specifically for fitness coaches and gyms to help your members stay longer and pay longer, go to nomly.com. That's N A A M L Y.com. You can schedule a demo to get a feel for what you can do with this incredible tool. Use the referral code Shrink Coach to get started on your free 30 day trial. Also, don't forget, really important, perform better. The app is live. You can see all of this year's virtual summer seminar series go to the app store or google play to download that now it's all free welcome to the certified functional strength coach segment on the strength coach podcast this is coach brendan rarick and today we are on part four of our movement as medicine seven part series last week i spoke about power and its importance as we age this episode, I will talk about your get-up score. The get-up test, also known as the sitting rising test, or SRT for short in the scientific literature, is completed as follows. One, stand in comfortable clothes in your bare feet. Two, do your best to lower yourself into a sitting position on the floor without using a hand or a knee to do so. Three, Stand back up trying to do the same without using any support. These two basic movements in the sitting rising test, lowering yourself to the floor and standing back up, are each scored on a one to five scale, 
with one point subtracted each time that a hand is placed on a knee or a hand, knee, forearm, or the side of the leg is used for support for a maximum of 10 total points. If you're having trouble envisioning the test and how it is scored, head to certifiedfsc.com forward slash blog for a visual. In a study done by Brazilian physician Claudio Gil Arujo, using this sitting and rising test with more than 2,000 patients aged 51 to 80, he found that those who scored fewer than 8 points on the test out of 10 were twice as likely to die within the next 6 years compared to those who scored higher. Those who scored 3 or fewer points were more than 5 times as likely to die within the same period. And each 1 point increase in the SRT score was associated with a 21% decrease in mortality from all causes. So what do we do with all this information? First, we hope sharing such information will encourage more people to walk through the doors of a gym rather than roll through the doors of a hospital. Secondly, this makes a case for more ground-based movements and pursuing proficiency in the Turkish get-up exercise for both longevity and health. Let's start by discussing the Turkish get-up. The Turkish get-up, or affectionately known as the TGU, is much more than a core exercise. It places huge demands on strength, stability, mobility, and focus. We recommend pausing at every step, taking time to learn that position and breathe. Getting off the ground under load like this is unique to each person's movement index. The movement is going to be determined by things like lever lengths, mobility, and strategies. Get-ups are like fingerprints. Although they may look similar, no two are exactly the same. When performing the Turkish get-up, it is very important to progress slowly. Dedicate a few weeks to learning each step of the TGU. Don't worry about loading early on. Coach Brett Jones suggests you should perform at least 100 TGUs on each side with no load before adding a kettlebell. Now, how to sprinkle in more opportunities to get up and down during a workout. Number one. In the warm up. This following ground to standing warm up circuit will prepare your body for training by improving core muscle sequencing, stabilizing the hip, improving shoulder and thoracic range of motion, and increase body temperature. The routine can be performed entirely with body weight, but external resistance can be added if you desire to increase the difficulty. Exercise number one of 11, segmental rolling, two each way upper and lower body. Number two, inchworm walkout for 10 yards. Number three, bear crawl, 10 yards forward, 10 yards backwards. Number four, lateral crawl, 10 yards in each direction. Number five, thoracic bridge, five each way. Number six, 15 push ups. Number seven, toe touch to squat for 10 reps. Number eight, walking lunges for 10 on each side. Cossack squats or lateral squats for 10 on each side. Single leg reaching deadlift for 10 on each side. And then the final exercise, number 11, five full Turkish get ups on each side. Along with warm ups, you can also program up down circuits. A simple programming approach that we learned from Coach Dan John. An up-down circuit pairs standing exercises with ground-based exercises in an alternating fashion. This is a great way to increase metabolic demand without resorting to dangerous, nonsense exercises like burpees that can be hazardous for the shoulder, the wrist, and the back. An example up-down circuit could be kettlebell swings for 20 reps, push-ups for 20 reps, squats for 20, 10 reps, ab rollout, for 10 reps. Repeat four times. That's going to do it for today's episode. Check out certifiedfsc.com 
forward slash blog for more information on the sitting rising test, a how to video for breaking down the Turkish get up exercise, and some more ideas for up down circuits and warm ups. Please also review the citations and studies that accompany the article to make your own informed decision. Welcome to the Fit to Speak segment. My name is Jenny Rurick, and today I'm going to introduce a new segment series that focuses on the four elements of great communication. There's nothing more frustrating than having something to say and not being able to say it because you're not sure if it's the right time to say it, what you want to share, or how to articulate your thoughts because you're nervous or unsure of yourself or because you struggle to get the focused attention of the people that you want to speak to. In these moments, you might think to yourself, I need to improve my communication skills. But what exactly does that mean? It's like saying, I need to get better at triathlons. Which is it? The swim, the bike, or the run? Communication is the name of the system. What you really want to do is improve some skill within that system. So today, I'm here to tell you what those skills are, and then over the next couple of segments, I'll go into more detail about each of them. Why is this important? Well, because you can't get better at something when you approach it at the system level. You have to know the individual skills that make up that system and then attack them in isolation. The system is only as strong as the weakest skills within that system. So the four skills within the system of communication are, number one, your ability to assess the situation, which is your ability to read the room through observation, listening, and reflection. So when you decide to communicate, you're doing so in a way that's appropriate and relevant. The second skill is your ability to build a message plan. Your ability to do this is based on what you learned in your assessment of the situation. This includes deciding on a topic or what the point of your message is, knowing what people need to know versus what's nice to know, what order you should share your information in, how you'll open the communication, and so forth. Others' ability to interpret your message is only as good as your ability to share that message in a clear manner. The third skill in the system of communication is your ability to translate that message. It's you having the skills to take the message plan that you put together and put it into action, whether that's through an extemporaneous conversation, writing an email or an article, or maybe creating a formal presentation or a speech. It's your ability to not only determine the appropriate carrier for your message, but also execute it in a way that's going to help you communicate. And the fourth and final skill is delivery, your ability to speak, to compel people to listen to you because of the way you carry yourself, your vocal command, and the type of physical energy you give off when you address a group, speak on the phone, or interact in one-on-one conversations. So the next time you think to yourself, I need to improve my communication, ask yourself, what specifically do I want to improve? What skill do I want to improve? Is it my ability to assess a situation, build a coherent message plan, translate my message in a way that will actually help me, or deliver with command and confidence? And if you tune into the next four segments, I'm going to look at each of these in more detail, helping you to not only understand the elements within each of these skills, but also how to improve them. That's what I have for you today. If you liked what you heard and you want access to a PDF that details what you just listened to, visit the Fit to Speak website, which is www.fit-to-speak.com. On the website, you can also get more information about one-on-one coaching with me and upcoming online courses and hopefully one day live events. Hey, this is Adam. This is Tim. Welcome to the Train Hook Data Driven Coaching segment. Yes, happy holidays. Tis the season. It is. And uh, we're going to wrap up our 2020 here in our little sequence of segments on remote coaching best practices. 
uh, and talk about what this time of year affords you, what opportunities you've got with both the, the clients you already have and the ones you hope to get. Yeah, I love that. So let's start with people already training with you. And yeah. what I'm thinking is this holiday season might be unusual as all of 2020 has, has been rather. <laughs> yes. uh, in that you know, fewer people are going to be traveling. Um, it may, you know, some people will, surely, but certainly have to expect that some of your clients are going to be staying home and not traveling right. like they normally would, which kind of, it makes their experience the holidays different, right? They're a little more isolated and they don't have the same excuse for not keeping their habits going. <laughs> and that. yeah, there's also this thing we've heard, which is as COVID's gone on, we've heard a lot of people say that their training or their you know gym time has become an escape. Yeah. Um, so that it's this thing that they have that's, that's for them. It's good for them. They, you know, they can enjoy it and, and escape from everything in it. So I think that there's yeah. an opportunity to keep those folks more engaged than in other years, probably. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it takes a little bit of a mindset shift from our coaches. You know, we do generally and historically, we've seen, you know, a lull in training over this season. And we know that folks, you know, tend to pack on a few extra pounds during this time of year. Um, and instead of almost letting that fall by the wayside, knowing everyone's busy, schedules are shifting, priorities have changed. This year, you might have to take some time um, to set up a plan as a coach to re-engage these folks during this time, because they may be alone, they may be isolated, they may not be with their family where they wish to be. So you have to be that kind of that glue that's holding them together. Um, during the holiday season, I'd get on that soon and I'd create a little schedule out of them to make sure I'm engaged with the folks I'm training remotely. Yeah. At the very least, just, you know, it wouldn't, wouldn't look forward to your Christmas vacation too soon, too early. <laughs> yeah. That's a really good point. Um, and I think, you know, there's some other things you can do here in terms of engagement for your, you know, your current clientele, you can offer, you know, I think a really fun one's a referral program or a train with a buddy program, get someone on board. You can reward that current athlete with a, you know, a month discount, you can, you know, get a testimonial from someone to use for uh, marketing, more to come there in a minute. And then you can reward that person. You can really show appreciation for the folks that you're training now over the holiday. Don't forget about those people. Don't think it's just about the new sales, which is important, right? Yeah. I think that's kind of our next, our, our little segue right there. How convenient you would mention such a thing, man. <laughs> Yes, so, this, Adam. as Tim mentioned, you know, everybody knows this time of year, you know, even those people who don't make formal New Year's commitments, you know, yeah. a, lot, a lot of people do start to think about things they'd like to achieve in the new year. So there's an opportunity there for, for you to step in and help someone towards their goals. Yeah. Tim, you've been talking to some of our coaches and marketplace sellers about this. What kind of advice can you offer there? Yeah, it's, it's pretty simple. And I know I, I I tend to say that a bunch and easier said than done, but it's really, again, to the, that first point of just being consistent over this time period where coaches generally wouldn't be. Again, you're, you know, you've got a lot of stuff going on with your business, with your family, um, and you want to kind of prioritize those things. But just setting a little schedule as to, all right, I'm going to commit to posting three times a day on Instagram. They don't have to be super sales, these posts. People just need to know I'm there and I can draw a through line between where they want to be for the new year and what I can provide them. Super easy. Don't change who you are. Be authentic. Also, make it irresistible, right? Offer a compelling discount so it's a no-brainer, right? Make it super easy so someone can buy this for themselves or gift it to someone else. That's where I'd start. But the bottom line, Adam, is be consistent, get on a schedule and just make it known. If it's not known, no one's going to click the button. Yeah. So you're just saying, you know, you can't just coast through the end of the year and hope something happens basically. Totally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I like what you said about LTOs and things like that, you know, in train her those come across as in our marketplace, you have promo codes, right? Or you can give them out to a limited number of people or for a limited time, that kind of thing. Uh, anything else you can offer there, Tim? Yeah, I think, the, the one thing that kind of ties everything together, in my opinion, is, is your ability to speak the athlete's language. And, you know, it's, there's always going to be kind of this new year, new me psychology out there. Um, and I think you can lean into that as a coach. And again, the importance there is not to tell the athletes exactly what it is you do, the sets and reps, but connect the dots. Say, this is where you want to be. This is what I do. Here's how we're going to get there together. So use that language. Know that people are looking to shift their behaviors and lean into that. That's what you're, that's what you're here for to coach these people up and bring them from point A to point B. That's right. Where there, there's, there's an imagined point B that everybody's got, right? You got it. Regardless make it, whatever it is. Yeah. You know, make it a clear road. 
Yeah. I imagine myself being stronger or more muscular, you know, Bingo. maybe yeah. taller, though you can't help me with that. <laughs> can't really help you there, but um, stronger, I can help you there. Yeah. But as you said, a lot of this comes down to doing the basics and doing the consistently. Um, a lot of people that you've talked to, uh, they'll get really concerned about some pretty marginal thing and they're yeah. not even doing the big rocks yet. Yep. Make a schedule, be consistent, post, engage. That's the formula. That's going to do it for us today. Go to trainheroic.com, start your 14-day free trial. We've got new pricing in there starting as low as $9.99 to suit any kind of coach. All right, that's going to do it for episode 302 of the Shrink Coach Podcast. Remember, you can try shrinkcoach.com out. 30 days, just a buck. You'll have access to all the articles, videos, and programs, as well as the best forum on the net. It's the only place that full access to Coach Boyle. He's on every single day. To access that offer, go to shrankcoach.com. Click the Join Now button to get started on your trial. Special thanks to Chris Parrier and the folks over at Perform Better. Remember, the app is live. It features amazing presentations from this year's virtual summer seminar series, as well as some top presentations from earlier functional training summits. Also, check out the sales at performbetter.com. Thanks to Coach Boyle for sharing his insights into 2020, a little bit of a crazy year, but lots of, th lots of things to learn and uh, that we took away from that. So uh, always fun to have him on for the end of the year talk. Thanks to Nomly, helping build relationships through personalized communication. So you remember, stay longer and pay longer. Don't forget to go to their website, nomly.com. That's N-A-A-M-L-Y.com to check them out and to use the referral code Shrank Coach to get started on your free 30-day trial. Thanks to Adam and Tim at Train Heroic. Coach Boyle and I both use Train Heroic to deliver all of our online training. Head over to trainheroic.com to start your free 14-day trial. Thanks to Jenny Rerick of fit to speak Check her out at fit-2-speak.com. That's fit to speak fit 2 to speakcom Thanks to Kevin Carr and Brendan Rerick. Check them out at Certified FSC. That's Certified Functional Strength Coach.com. My name is Anthony Reno. My book, Be Like the Best, consists of 50 interviews with top fitness pros. And after each interview is a Be Like, which is just an action step or a challenge that'll help you be like the best guys. It is a great time of year to get that. There's so many things that'll help you jumpstart your goal setting process, your process about designing what your mission is and your purpose. Uh, lots of different challenges about habits. So check it out at belikethebest.com or continuefit.com. All right, that's going to do it for this episode. Thanks again. And I will speak to you next time.